Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Ansible Fest 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great power panel here from <laughs> Kindrel, who's a great company, has spun out of IBM IT services. Great uh, technology, great conversation. Scott Kinane, Director of Worldwide Automation. Anand Gopal Krishnan, Chief Automation Architect. Love the title from Kindrel. And Lisa Seves, Automations Architect from Kindrel. Guys, thanks for coming on. Appreciate uh, the conversation. Looking forward to it. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott, we covered um, you guys um, at IBM Think 2021, the new name, everything's happening. The, the extreme focus, the tactical execution has been pretty much on cloud, cloud native automation. This is the conversation. Um, knowing how much has gone behind the new name, can you just take a minute to share, give us an update on uh, who Kindrel is and how that's going? Yeah, I'd love to. You know, as Kindrel, we really have the privilege of being responsible for designing, building, managing, and, and modernizing, you know, the mission critical systems that the world depends on every day. You know, our thousands of clients span every industry and our leaders in their industries, right? We run the mission critical application environments for, you know, seven of the 10 largest airlines, 28 of the top 50 banks, right? All the largest mobile providers, you know, most of the largest retailers out there and, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, these companies really trust us to ensure that their business operations are really flawlessly being run and, and, and operating at our scale and with the quality that these clients demand is only possible by doing enterprise strength automation, right? It, it's only, a, you know, and it's not only about reactive automation, but using intelligent automation so we can predict and prevent issues before they really become a problem, right? And because of our intelligent approach to automation, our clients have a tremendous, you know, they get tremendous business benefits for it, right? Retailers can open stores faster because systems and services are deployed more efficiently, right? Banks, ATMs, right? We all depend on those day to day, you know, they're working in when you need them with our automation behind the scenes. You know, healthcare systems are, are more robust and responsive because we monitor for potential breaks and, and prevent them before they occur, right? Data processing systems, right? We hear about breaches all the time, right? Our, our clients are more secure because their environments are, are checked into uh, are checked to ensure that security exposures are quickly discovered and, and intermediated, right? So like automation, orchestration, intelligence, driving the world's digital economy, right? If you ask what Kindrel is, it, you know, that's our DNA and, and it's really what we do well. Yeah, what's interesting, I want, I want to get you to uh, just quick follow up on yeah. that because the name implies kind of a fresh perspective. Working together, there's a lot of shared experiences and I, and the, the new normal now is obviously with, with uh, hybrid and virtual continuing, people are doing things differently. And I would like you, if you don't mind, take a minute to share about the automation environment that you guys are operating in because it's a different approach, but the game is still the same, right? You've got to make sure <laughs> um, that these things are scaling and people are working together. So it's a combination of people yeah. and technology and new equation. Take a minute to, to talk about that. Yeah, I'd love to. You know, and, 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 and you're right, right? The game is really changing and, and automation is really ingrained into, needs to be ingrained into the way everybody's approaching what they do day to day. And if you talk about automation, you know, it's really included in what we do in our BAU delivery operations, right? And, and, and we do it at a tremendous scale, right? We're we have, you know, millions of infrastructure components and, and applications managed with automation, right? We're going to talk a little bit about CACF here in a few minutes, right? We've got over half a million devices themselves uh, boarded onto that. And we're running over 11 million automations on a month to month basis through that, through the, uh, the Red Hat technology that that's built on, right? We've got RPA is, is a key part of our environment, running millions of transactions through that on a, a year, year, yearly basis, right? Um, and, and our automation is really covering the entire stack, right? It's not just about traditional IT, but we cover public cloud, private cloud, hybrid, you know, network components, applications and business processes, right? You, you talked about people, right? Help desk, right? We, we cover automation to, to automate a lot of the help desk processes that are happening behind the scenes, security and resiliency. And, and it's really about driving all that through, um, you know, not just prescriptive reactions, but, you know, us using our experience, uh, insights we have from our data lakes and and Intel and AI ops technologies, and really making proactive based decisions based on that to, to really help drive uh, the value back for our clients and, and to ensure that they're you know operating the way they need to. Yeah, that right? systems mindset, uh, outcome driven yeah. um, focus is unique. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. And on Lisa, we're going to get into the architect side of it because you're seeing more and more automation at the center of all the conversation. It reminds me of the machine learning AI um, vibe a couple of years ago. It's like, oh yeah, everything's ML AI. Automation, no, everything's automation. And on you, your title is Chief Automation Architect. Love that title. What do you do? Like, I mean, you're architecting more automation. Are you, can you take a minute to explain um, your role? I love the title and, um, and automation is really the technology driving a lot of the change. What do you do? Thank you, John. So let me uh, first um, uh, thank you for uh, allowing us to come and speak to you and uh, 
the forum here about what we have done using Ansible and other Red Hat products. So Ansible is one of the many products that we have used within Red Hat to support the solution that we have deployed called as Cloud Automation Community Framework, right? So Scott touched upon it a few minutes earlier in terms of what are we doing for our clients? How do we make sure that our client's environment is secure? How do we make sure that our client's environment is available all the time so that our, the infrastructure services that we're providing for our clients has a direct impact for their clients. So this is where uh, the implementation of automation using the products that we have from Red Hat has helped us achieve and we'll continue, we will continue to expand on supporting that, right? So let me break this into two parts. One is from an infrastructure standpoint, how we have implemented the solution uh, and scaled it in such a way that we can support the number of devices that Scott was uh, referring to earlier and also the number of clients that we have touched on. And the second part, I'll let my colleague Lisa talk about the application architecture and the application scalability that we have, right? So first let me touch on infrastructure. So if you look at the way we needed to establish a, a capability to provide support to our clients is we wanted to make sure our infrastructure is available all the time, right? That's very important. So before we even basically say, hey, we're going to make sure that our client's infrastructure is available all the time or our client's infrastructure is secure. And uh, also we provide, we're able to provide the automation services for the infrastructure service that we're providing, right? So the stack that we built was to support our solution to be truly cloud native. So we began with, of course, choosing OCP, which is the OpenShift cloud platform that we have, deployed on Red Hat Core OS, which is um, basically enabling the automation platform to be deployed as a true cloud native application that can be scalable to not just within one country, but multiple countries supporting data privacy that we need to have, supporting the compliance posture that we need to support and scalable to support the half a, half a billion devices that we are supporting today, right? So essentially, if you look at what we have is a capability enabled on the entire stack of the Red Hat products that we have, and we are able to focus on ensuring that we are able to provide the automation by gaining efficiency, right? If you look at our, a lot of automations that we have is about de-risking complexities, right? So ju just think about the, uh, the amount of risk that we are removing and the quality that we are assuring from the codified and standardized changes that we are basically impl implementing, or uh, just the amount of risk that we are able to eliminate by removing thousands of manual labor hours as well. So if you look at the uh, automation need, it's not just about efficiency of the removal of labor hours, but efficiency of providing standards and efficiency of providing the capabilities that support our clients to their needs, i.e. making sure that their infrastructure is compliant, their infrastructure is secure, and their infrastructure is highly available all the time. So which is basically making sure that we're able to address what we call as day one and day two activities while we are able to support their day two infrastructure services activities, i.e. right from ground up, building the server, which is provisioning, doing some provisioning activities and deploying applications and basically supporting the applications once they are deployed, right? Okay. So look at the scale. So we have quite a bit there. So you got the yeah. cloud native Careful platform. Careful, Anand. Got the cloud native platform. Let me just summarize that. Cloud native platform for scale. <laughs> so that means you're aligning and targeting and working with people who want to do cloud native applications. Absolutely. And they want fast speed. <laughs> yes, and they want. <laughs> they want everything to go faster. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the compliance piece is super important because if you can take that away from them, from waiting for the answers from the compliance department or security department then that's the flywheel. Is that what you're, is that what you're getting at? This is the trend? Absolutely. So I'm going to turn it over to Lisa, who's going to help yeah. us talk about that. Go ahead, Lisa. Lisa, weigh in yeah. on the flywheel here. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. So so one of the things that CACF allows us to do, right, and, and it's on, again, as on described, it's a very robust, powerful infrastructure, supports many, many clients, is we run a lot of applications through this infrastructure, and we do things like 
run security health checks on all our client servers and process the data real time and get that data out to our teams to address issues uh, almost immediately, right? Um, Scott touched on the fact that we are monitoring incident data real time and taking automated actions to correct problems in the environment. Uh, these, these are just really, really powerful capabilities that we're able to offer. Um, we also have other use cases. We do a lot of identity management, primary and secondary controls through the CACF infrastructure. So we're able to have one point of connectivity into our clients' environments. Uh, it's agentless, right? So you set up one connection to their servers and we can do a whole lot of management um, of various things through this single automation platform, so. So I so that just to call this out, this is actually very powerful. And first of all, you mentioned mm -hmm. CACF, that's the Cloud Automation Community Framework. Yeah. Right. Okay, Correct. so yeah. that's the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so now the platform's there, and now the, talk about the, the advantages, because the, pow the power here is, this truly highlights a transformation of DevOps, infrastructure as code, and mm -hmm. microservices around the, coming around the corner, where the developer, and the developers want to build security into the applications from day one, and take advantage of new services as they come online. That is now one. That puts the pressure on the old IT teams, the old security teams who mm -hmm. have been the no ops. No, you can't do it, or slow, or slower. This is a trend, this is actually happening, and this culture shift mm -hmm. is happening. Can you guys yeah. weigh in on that? Because this is a really important part of the story. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, if you, if you go back, you know, circa 2019 or so, right, uh, you know, we, we were, Back then we were recognized as a leader in the automation space by a lot of the analysts, but we kind of look at that culture change you were just talking about and look at, you know, how do we become more agile? How do we go faster in what we're doing, right? And, and then working with Jason McCurr and the Red Hat's Ansible automation platform team, we, we kind of defined this platform that Lisa and Nanan are talking to, right? Wrapping together the OpenShift and Ansible and 3Scale with, uh, you know, our services platform with Watson and, and you know, it, it really gave us the ability to, to leverage two of our core capabilities, right? The first, um, you know, in order for us to go faster was our community model, right? Our community experience, right? So we've got a, a, a large delivery community that's out there, really experts in a lot of um, experts in a lot of technologies and industries. And 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 by putting this in place, it gave us a way to to really leverage them more in that community model development. So they could create and we could harvest more of the automation playbooks and and you know a lot of the different use cases that uh, Lisa was talking: incident remediation, patch scanning and deployment, security compliance, checking and enforcement. You know, basically anything that needs to get done as part of our um, what we what we'd call day one or day two operations we do for a client, right? Uh, and, and this gave us approach really to to do a lot of high quality automation and, and get to the point where we could get thousands of automation modules that our clients could uh, that we could use uh, as a part of our uh, a part of our services we deliver to the the client environments. And and you know uh, that type of speed and 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 agility and and being able to kind of leverage that was something that wasn't there uh, previously. It, it also gave us a way to leverage. I guess they are, are one of our other core capabilities, right? Which is a systems integrator, right? So we were able to focus more by having that core engine in place, we were able to form focus more on our integrator experience and integrate, you know, IBM technologies, Ser ServiceNow, ScienceLogic, VMware, and, and many more, right, to the engine itself. So, you know, basically, you know, all the applications out there that the uh, the clients depend on for their business environments integrate directly with them so we could see more seamlessly bring the automation to their uh, to their environments, right? So it really gave us um, both the, uh, the, the ability to change our culture, um, have a community model in place that we didn't before and, and really leverage that services integrator expertise that we bring to the table uh, and, and act really fast on behalf of our, uh, our clients out there. That's great stuff. Lisa, Lisa, if you don't mind, could you share your thoughts on what's different about the community platform? Um, and because automation has been around for a while, you, you do a couple of times, mm -hmm. you, you do something repetitive, you automate it, automate that away yeah. and that's efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Within, within Kindra, we have a very strong community and we have very strong security guidelines around what the community produces and what we de deliver to our clients, right? So we give our teams a lot of flexibility, but we also make sure that the content is very secure. We do a lot of testing. We have very strong security teams that do actual physical you know, penetration testing, right? They actually could try and come in and break things. So, you know, we really feel good about, you know, not only do we give our teams the flexibility, but we also, you know, make sure that it's safe for our clients. How's the relationship with Ansible evolving? Because as Ansible continues to do well with automation, automation is now like 
in automation as code. We, if things are discoverable, reuse is a big topic in the community model. How is Ansible factoring into your success? So, uh, so first, let, I want to break this in again into two discussions, right? One is the product itself. And second is how we have collaborated very closely with uh, our colleagues at Red Hat, right? So essentially uh, it's, it's the feedback that we get from our clients, which is then fed into our solution. And then from our solution, we basically say, does it meet what our clients requirements are? If it doesn't, then we work with our Red Hat colleagues say, hey, you know, we need some enhancements to be made. And uh, we've been we've been lucky enough to work with our colleagues at Red Hat very closely, where we've been able to make some core product changes to support our clients' requirements, right? And that's very very important in terms of the collaboration from uh, uh, with Red Hat from uh, you know from a client standpoint. That's number one. Number two, from a product standpoint, Ansible and the use of Ansible itself, right? Or Ansible Tower as the automation hub that we've been using. So we began this with uh, a very base uh, uh, product capability, which was to do what we call event, event automation. That was our first. Then we said, no, I think we can certainly look at expanding this to beyond event automation, i.e. can we do, uh, when we say event, which is typically BAU activities, day two activities, but then we said, can we, can we do day one, day two infrastructure services automation? Uh, we said, yes, why not? And then we worked again with our colleagues at Red Hat, uh, identifying opportunities to improve on those. Uh, and we basically enhanced the framework to support those uh, additional use cases uh, that we basically identified. And as a matter of fact, we are continually looking at improving as well uh, in terms of not just, hey, using the base product as is, but also receiving that feedback, giving that feedback to our that had colleagues and then implementing it as we go. So that's the, that's the approach we've taken. And what's the other half of the, so the split it in two. What's the other half? Yep. So the other half is the actual implementation itself. So we like, which is basically expanding the use cases to go from beyond event automation to right from building the server to uh, also patching compliance. And now we're actually looking at even uh, what we call service request automation, right? Which is we basically want to be able to say, hey, user, you want to, a specific action to be performed on a particular endpoint, can we take it to that next level as well? So that's where we are basically looking at as we progress. So we've, we're not done. I would say we're still at the beginning of expansion. Well, no, yeah. to I totally agree. I think it's early days. And I think a lot of it's, you mentioned day two operations. I love that. Day zero, day one, day two. Does anyone want to take a stab at defining what day two operations is? <laughs> How do you well, want to go? Well, I got the experts here. It's good to get the definitions out there. Because day, day one, you're provisioned, right? Day zero, you provision. Day zero, so you provision. Look at, yeah, so day zero, you look at what is the infrastructure, what's the hardware that's there. And then day one, you do what we call post-provisioning activities, configuring everything that we need to do, uh, like deploying the middleware applications, making sure the applications are configured properly, making sure that our uh, you know, um, uh, the um, operating systems that we need to have, whether it, whether it is a base operating system or operating systems for uh, supporting the containers that are basically going to be enabled, all those will need to be looked at, right? So that's day one. And then day two is business as usual. It breaks on day two. Day, <laughs> uh, <how do> <laughs> day one's <laughs> fun, everything's good. We got everything up and running. We stood it up and day two breaks and like, you know, it's his fault. Exactly. Whose fault is so, it? <laughs> but, you know. So if you look at the approach that we took was we said, well, let's start with the day two, then get to day zero, right? So which can, which where we have lots of lessons learned uh, as we go through, and that's the expansion of uh, how we are looking at Ansible. Well, this is yeah. this is all fun aside. First of all, it's all it's all fun to to have to have, to have jokes like that. But the reality is, is that the hardened operational discipline required to go beyond day one is critical. Right, so this is where we start getting into the ops side where security, downtime, disruptive operations, it's got to be programmable. Uh, and by the way, automation's in there too, so which means that it's not humans, it's software running, right? Mm -hmm. So edge is going to complicate the hell out of that too. So day two becomes super important from an architecture standpoint. You guys are the architects. What's the strategy? What should people be doing? What, what how should, because day one is fun. You get it up, stand it up, but then it starts getting benefit. People start paying attention. And yep. then it, you need to yeah. scale it and harden it. What's the strategy? What, what should people do? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, automation, right? It, it's not 
And, oh, and, and I, should, I meant to say, John, you know, if it breaks, it's always an on's fault. Always an on's fault. Don't ask any of I agree. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but automate, you know, you know, automation, a, a lot of conversations, people talk about it as, as gaining efficiency. And, and, you know, it, it's not just that, you know, automation is about de-risking complexities, right? Think about all the risk that's removed you know, and quality assured from the codified and standardized changes, right? Think about all the risk removed from elim eliminating you know, the tens of thousands of manual labor hours that have to be done and, and, and those various things, right, that get done. So, so, so for, for we talk about day two operations, what we're doing, getting more automation in there, you know, our, our focus is, is definitely how do we de-risk changes? How do we make it safer for the clients? How do we make it more secure for the clients? And, and, and how do we ensure that their business operations, you know, are operating at their peak efficiencies? Yeah, and, and as I mentioned, we really go above and beyond on the security. We have much, much, much automated testing, and we also have the penetration testing I was talking about. So we take it very, very seriously. Yeah. yeah, I think what's interesting about the, uh, what you guys are doing with the platform is it's cloud native. You start to see not just a replatforming, but the, the fun parts when you start thinking about refactoring applications and benefits start to mm -hmm. come out of nowhere. I mean, new benefits, new net, new use cases. So I think the outcome side of this is interesting. A lot of people talk about, okay, let's focus on the cost, but there's now net new positive, potentially revenue impact for your customers. This is kind of where the game changes a lot. What do you yes. guys think about that? Because that's, you know, we always have this argument with folks who are very cost centric, repatriate everything off the cloud, or let's not, let's look at the net new opportunities that are going to be enabled by rapid programming, identifying new workflows, automating them and creating value. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, you're talking about the, the future, where we're going, things that we do, you know, uh, obviously getting more uh, closer to and, and being directly aligned with the DevSecOps teams that are out there. You talk about day two, you know, the closer we are to those guys, the the better for, for us and everybody else that's going there going forward. You know, and, and as, as, you know, businesses keep returning to their pre-COVID le levels, you know, automation gives the possibility and the ones that we we're doing gives possibility for hopefully the clients do more of that revenue capture, right? Being able to, you know, I, I hit a little bit earlier, being able to stand up retail stores faster, right? Being able to deploy business-based applications that are, are are generating revenue for the clients at, at a you know you know at a at moment's notice Th things like that are, are really possible with automation and possible with the the way we've done this solution with uh with red hat and our clients right and and, and i think we've got tons of benefits there we're seeing you know we, we've got almost 900 clients boarded on it today right we you know non-hit on us we got half a million plus devices that are, are connected to this, right? And, and we're seeing things where, mm -hmm. you know, the clients are, are that are on this are, are, are getting results, you know, some things such as 61% of all tickets being resolved with no human intervention, you know, 84% of their entire service base, server base is being checked automatically for security and compliance daily. And, and, and you know, we could go through lots of those different metrics, but the, you know, the fact we can do that for our clients gives, gives uh, through automation gives, you know, our engineers, our delivery community, uh, the ability to closely, more closely work with the client to to do those revenue generation uh, activities to to help them capture more uh, more revenue in the market. Well, just put that in context and on yeah. scale, the scale and speed of what's happening with those numbers, I mean, it's significant. It's not like it's a small little test. It's like large scale. <laughs> Scale's the yeah. advantage of cloud. Yeah. Cloud is a scale game. The advantage is scaling and handling that scale. What's your thoughts? Absolutely. So if you basically again look. When we started this, we started small, right? Uh, in terms of the use cases that we wanted to tackle, the number of devices that we said we could basically handle, right? But then once we saw the benefits, the initial benefits of how quickly we were able to fix some of the problems from a day one, day two standpoint, or address some of the compliance and patching issues that we needed to uh, look at, right? Uh, we, we quickly saw opportunities and said, how fast can we go? And in terms of, well, it's not just how fast can we go in terms of uh, setting up our own infrastructure by you know, saying, hey, we are cloud native, I can just spin up another container and you know, uh, make sure that I can have another 100 servers onboarded to, uh, to support or 100 uh, network devices to be onboarded to support and so on, right? So it was also the scale from a, um, automation standpoint where we needed to make sure that our resources were skilled to develop the automations as well. So the scale is not in terms of just infrastructure, but the scale is also in terms of people that can do the automation 
in terms of uh, you know providing the services for our infrastructure, right? So that's how we approached it: people and in, uh, and application and infrastructure. So that included providing education in yeah. in Kindrel today, close to about eleven thousand people that we have trained on Ansible, the use of Ansible, and the use of Ansible Tower, and just um, even doing development of the playbooks using Ansible, right? So if you look at, if you look at, it's not just infrastructure scale, it's infrastructure scale, application to be able to scale to that infrastructure and people to be able to scale to what we're trying to do to support our clients as well. I think the people thing is huge because you have a side benefit here as Harmony mm -hmm. and the teams. You got cohesiveness that breeds peace. Not war. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's between. Well, if you look at if if you look at the you know the words that we said, right? Yeah. Cloud automation community framework. If you really break it down, right? It's a framework, but for who? It's for the community. Yeah. But what are they doing? They're building automation. Yeah. I and mean, security team wants to make the, the, the security cloud, team right? wants to make the, the apps go faster. The apps want to be fast. They don't want to be waiting. Everything's about go, going faster. Pass, shoot, score, as they say in sports. But but okay, I, I love this conversation. I think it's, it's going to be the beginning of a big wave. How do people engage? And how do I get involved if I want to use the cloud automation community framework? What's the consumption side for how do you guys push this out there? And how do people um, engage with you? Or do you want to take that one? Yeah, I mean the the easiest way is um, you know, Kindrel. You know, we're we're out there. We're we're coming forward with our uh, company as spinoff from IBM. Come engage with our sales reps. Come engage with uh, our our outsourcing uh, service management service delivery organizations. And and you know, happy to get them engaged, get them on board, and and get them using the automation framework we've got in place. Awesome, great. Well, great stuff. Love the automation conversation. Automation and hybrid are the big big trends that are never going to stop. Um, it's going to be a hybrid world we live in. And the edge is exciting, Scott, you mentioned the edge, it's just more and yeah. more action. It's a distributed computing paradigm. I mean, it really is the same. We've seen this movie before and on, <laughs> you know, in, in tech. <laughs> so now it's automation. Yeah. So great <laughs> stuff. Lisa, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. John. Cube coverage you. for Ansible Fest 2021. Power panel breaking down automation with Kindrel, the importance of community, the importance of cohesiveness with teams, but more importantly, the outcome, the speed and of, of development and security. I'm John Furrier, the Cube. Thanks for watching.